Swear to God is the second episode of the seventh season of Cheers. This is, of course, directed by the wonderful Burroughs. And as always, there will be spoilers from now as I go through the episode and share some thoughts. And this one kind of feels like pre-Diane Sam. In recent seasons, Sam has shown a lot of growth, a lot of maturity, changing his ways quite a bit. But in this episode, well, this episode definitely could have been plucked out of one of the earlier seasons. It starts off, though, with Woody. And he is upset because he's understudying in a play, but the lead is never sick. So he doesn't think he's going to get to go on. He's playing Moses and Norm and Cliff test him. He runs some lines with them and Cliff asks what happened to the cellulites, to which <laughs> to which Norm replies, they settled in the land of Vera, which I rather enjoyed. After the intro, we then have Sam flirting with a woman at the bar. She's called Suzanne. She's played by Shanna Reed. And just as he's flirting with her, Woody gives Sam a message that a woman called his phone. It's urgent. And Sam phones her and he thinks that she's interested in sex. So he tells Suzanne that he has to visit his niece, Denise, as he's, he's running with that joke. And I will say there was a bit of an oversight with this here because Sam said that his niece's grandmother was sick and Suzanne responded, if it's your niece's grandmother, wouldn't that be your mother? Well, no, Suzanne, not necessarily because people have a maternal grandmother and a paternal grandmother and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's Sam's mother. It could be on the other side of the family. So a bit of an oversight. Suzanne tried to sound smart and it didn't work very well. Immediately after Sam comes back, and Cliff makes a comment, and Sam tells him that he has a big mouth. And Cliff says, actually, yes, Clavens have two extra teeth. We have big mouths. He goes off on one. And I just loved the way Norm and Fraser were looking at him. It was a mix of confusion and also appreciation for their friend because Cliff clearly brings a lot of oddities to their days. And that must be, well, sometimes amusing, sometimes annoying. And... Sam is then in the office. He tells him he wants to be alone, but Carla persuades him to talk to him, and he reveals that when he went to Denise, she showed him a baby boy. She'd had a baby. And I will say, I, I'm not a huge fan of the idea of not telling the prospective father until the baby is born. I think that that's a really bad idea. She knew that there were two potential fathers, and she decided to wait until the baby was born to tell Sam. And that means that if he is the father, he has no time for, to prepare. And I think that that's pretty selfish, to be honest. But nevertheless, Sam explains that it is between him and one other person. And if he is the father, Carla suggests it's fine, give her some money, that's the end of your responsibility. But Sam says no. And I really admired this. He wants to be there for the child. He wants to be a good father if he is the father. But he really doesn't want to be the father. And he swears to God, initially he'll never have sex again. But then he said, for three months, he will never have sex again if the child isn't his. Carla tells him he shouldn't mess with things like that. He shouldn't swear to God if he doesn't mean it. But we don't have too much time to think on this as there is a phone call from Denise. And Sam is not the father. He's about to go and celebrate this with Suzanne. And just as he's about to leave, Carla reminds him of his pact with God. God made sure the child wasn't his. And obviously that's not quite how it works. The father would have been decided a long time ago. But nevertheless, Sam made this pact. So he's not allowed to have sex for three months. And Carla tells him a story of a relative who lost his teeth. Sam realizes he could lose something else. And <laughs> at that moment... Just as the fear has been put into Sam, Woody comes in dressed as Moses and is beautifully executed. Great performance. Sam falls down. Carla is completely in shock. And it was just a really, really great moment. So Sam decides to go and see Father Barry. He's played by Eric Christmas. And I really love this scene. I love how this was handled. And there's actually one bit of dialogue or, or something that Father Barry says that I absolutely loved and I'll talk about the conversation more in a moment but he refers to Sam that this is between you and your God and the fact that for viewers at home certainly by saying your God it means that if anybody at home is in a similar situation but they don't believe in the Christian God they can apply it to their own religious beliefs by saying your God 
rather than God. It's showing respect that people have different beliefs and they worship different people. And I really like that. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know. But I just thought that was a really good decision. The conversation is actually about sweets. Sam is saying that he has a friend who made a pact with God that he wouldn't eat sweets for however long. What would happen if he ate a giant box of chocolates? Which is an interesting euphemism. And eventually he reveals that actually it's it's not about sweets. It's about sex. And Father Barry said something that I loved and I think is very true. He said, people who come here looking for answers usually know what the answer is. And I think it's all about trying to find that validation that breaking the pact is okay. And that's never going to be okay. If you're religious, that's certainly something that's going to be the case. And I do believe that in in certain paths, people go looking for answers when they want a certain answer, even though they know the answer is actually the opposite. And I think that that's very true. And I just, I love the scene. I thought they did a really, really great job with it. We're then back at what he goes to get some antibiotics for the person playing the lead of Moses. And then Sam is talking with Fraser. And Fraser tells him that he needs to find a different outlet for his sexual urges, basically something to distract him while he's not able to do this for for however many of the three months are left. And Fraser suggests music, which we'll come back to at the end with a brilliant moment. But I'll talk about that when we get there. Rebecca is leaving. Rebecca's not really in this very much. But since the previous episodes have been very Rebecca heavy, I'm not really allowed to complain about that. And Rebecca tells Sam she's going home to bed. She kind of took it personally that Sam didn't make a move on her. Carla's response to that, uh, I absolutely loved. Sam is then alone in the bar. Carla's milling around, tidying up. And a woman walks in, Rachel, played by Kim Johnson Ulrich. And she basically surprises Sam and immediately well I was going to say hits on Sam it's a lot more blunt than that she basically says I have a connecting flight I have a layover let's have sex while I wait and of course Sam is trying to resist this and I will say to his credit he really really tried but then he decides to go anyway and Carla comes into the bar she smells the perfume she sees the abandoned bible on the bar beautifully shot very dramatic very well done and she realises what has happened. Sam then comes in a little while later with a, a smug look on his face. And clearly it looks like he has post-sex happiness. But actually he didn't do it. And he tells Carla and Fraser that this is because they went to the hotel. And there was a Bible in the nightstand. Who could have guessed that? So they went to a different hotel. And there was another Bible in the nightstand. What are the odds? If you've ever travelled in hotels, you'll know that basically every hotel has a Bible in it. I don't know if that's quite so much the case today, but I, I do tend to go to hotels that have Bibles in them. And Sam saw this as a sign from God. Fraser was about to tell him that that's normal, that hotels do have Bibles in them. But I like the fact that Carla, Carla stopped Fraser there because Sam was clearly happy with how this had happened. He saw this sign. He acknowledged this sign. He acted on it accordingly. And he was so proud of himself. And I like the fact that Carla stopped Fraser from taking that away from him. However, it's still not going to be plain sailing for the next few weeks. Rebecca asks Sam to help her zip up the back of her dress. Sam zips it down. He's kind of shaking at this point. <laughs> and Fraser basically pushes him towards the piano and he starts to frantically play on the piano, referring back to when Fraser suggested something like music could be a healthy outlet in the interim. And I thought it was a, a fun way to end things. I thought Sam's facial expression at the end was just brilliant. I rather liked it and a nice way to bring Rebecca into it again because, as I said, she's not in this one very much, but it's understandable. I swear to God, Brilliant episode of Cheers. Really thoroughly enjoyed it. Sam was Sam was brilliant, but it's definitely Sam of the earlier seasons. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing. I think it helps to show that Sam is still Sam. He's definitely had some character development. He's gone on a really, well, I was going to say a great journey. I'm not sure if he'd look on the previous years as being particularly great, thanks to Diane. But certainly he has developed but it helps to show that he is still Sam. He's still the same person. And I think that that's rather believable and realistic. And ultimately, I thought, swear to God, it was a really brilliant episode.